former TV News anchor Brandon Lee. He left his job in local news and his mission was to find himself and to share his own story of abuse, of addiction. He was basically living two lives, one of which nobody in the public knew about. He's hoping that by talking about it and releasing all the ugly details, they're going to help somebody else. He has just written Mascara Boy, bullied, assaulted, and near death, surviving trauma and abuse. He also produced a documentary on the opioid crisis and resulting heroin epidemic. Take a look. I was shocked because the people I saw showing up to this needle exchange program shattered every stereotype that I thought a heroin user was. It's a hard fight and I've, I've had 13 friends lose their lives because of this. You know, people I've grown up with, people I've known all my life and they're gone. It's, it's, it's just, I don't know how to, else to describe it, it's just a battle. It is really hard and every time there was a bottom, you know, your rock bottom. It got deeper every time. I talked to Brandon uh, earlier. Here's what he told me. I walked into my manager's office and I said, listen, we've got a heroin crisis and an opioid crisis that's happening right here in Arizona. We need to do a documentary on it. And I did that to try and break the stereotype of what the public perception of a drug addict is. And when I went home and that documentary aired Christie and I started to read all of the comments on Facebook and on social media, their viewers were calling the people in our story trash, homeless, people to be discarded. And that broke me. And I actually broke down and started crying in my living room. And I picked up the phone and I called my sponsor in the 12 step recovery group that I'm a member of. And I said, I have eight years sober and it's time for me to break my anonymity. I needed to let the viewers know that the people that they were ripping in my documentary, that I used to be that junkie about a decade ago. And do they think of me that way? Do they think of me as a piece of trash and scum? Because Christy, the most important message that we can get out there is that addiction does not describe discriminate. It absolutely does not discriminate. And that includes the news anchor who's bringing you the nightly news at night used to be that guy. And, and I want to read something. The description in your book says about you and about your time. It says he would attend raves and circuit parties to get high. His drug addiction fueled his sex addiction. Brandon eventually created a double life, one as a professional news anchor, the other as a strung out druggie in the slums of Los Angeles. I think about you reading that line, a druggie in the slums of Los Angeles. That had to be a moment for you to characterize yourself like that, because clearly it's not something any of us would want to write about ourselves. No, it was the hardest truth, but it was the reality of the double life that I had lived for so long. When I was a reporter here in Los Angeles, Christy, I was living that double life, right? I wanted the public perception to see me as this Emmy Award winning news reporter out there on the streets doing a professional job. What people didn't realize that was when the 10 o'clock news was over with, that's when I went to the slums of LA and I started using hardcore drugs. And I am so grateful at least that the person I was using drugs with in the streets of LA one night and I overdosed, at least had the decency to pick up the phone and call 911 before he left the scene. And I ended up getting rushed to an LA Presbyterian hospital. And I was in a coma on life support twice in one week. And I was inside of the ER and I broke down crying. And I'll never forget this. This little nurse walked into my ER room and she held my hand and she looked at me and she said, Brandon, we all make mistakes. Do you believe in God? And I looked at her and I said, no, I don't. And Christy, she looked at me and she said, Brandon, that's okay because God still believes in you. Do me this favor. They have one of these AA meetings at my church every Thursday night. I've got $10 in my pocket. Take this $10 and use that as a cab ride to my church tonight when they discharge you. I went to that meeting. I made her that promise. And I have been sober ever since that day on February 22nd, 2010. Wow. I, and congratulations. I love to be able to tell people that you are nearly a decade sober. That is huge. What Thank are you. people going to learn in your book about the ability to take that turn? 
here's the thing I want people to know. The one question, Christy, I get asked all the time is you grew up in beautiful Orange County, California. You're a professional news anchor and a journalist. How did you turn to drugs and sex at age 15? And Christy, the most important thing that I can get there, get the message out to people is this. I sought intensive therapy and it was during intensive therapy that I realized that being repeatedly sexually abused by my piano teacher every Friday night when I was just a small boy and repeatedly sexually abused by my youth soccer coach, that eventually that that trauma untreated came out sideways. And I needed to realize what was the root cause of my addiction? What was causing me to choose sex and drugs as a way to cope and a way to numb myself? And it was a lot of early childhood trauma that I needed to address. So therapy is what really helped me address that. But I want people to know is this, no matter how far down the scale you have fallen, no matter how hopeless you feel, there is hope out there. It is a really brave story to tell, isn't it, Brandon Lee? Thank you so much. His book, Mascara Boy, is out now. And you can watch his report on the heroin crisis in Arizona. Go to his YouTube page for that.